Uudessa kohtin tämän Sami Assai, NASA North Rightus. Uh, welcome to the Sami part of uh, the NASA North Panel Series. Mulla on Jouna ja Anne Kirsti Räynä ja missä uh, on ne kolme Assalasti muun, um, Aslat ja Oulante, jotka muistelevat vähän äänet, Eitseska Pirra. Ja puokka, millä puokkaa melte um, siitä skullas. Ja kiitän Neisa North ja De Cinta Poutehusas ja tämän uh, panella raittu läidämis. I'm Rauna Kuokkanen and I'd like to thank Neisa North and De Cinta for the invitation to uh, join and, and for organizing this um, series. Today we are uh, three presenters, myself and Aslak Holmberg and Ola Antti um, um, They will say a few words about themselves uh, in the beginning of their presentations. And we are all part of the CEDA School, which is a collaborative uh, community-driven uh, renewal of Sami CEDA system by Sami scholars, artists and activists to explore how and which CEDA uh, practices could operate as part of uh, Sami governance structures today. And CETA is a traditional uh, uh, Sami um, social political organization that was in operation for hundreds of years until um, uh, other colonial structures uh, uh, were imposed upon it on, on, or on top of it. It has never been cancelled, uh, but it's no, not, no longer in operation in a larger scale. It is uh, functioning to a degree uh, within reindeer herding and um, the called Sami uh, political organization. Uh, the Sita School uh, aims at decolonizing Sami society through reclaiming and re-engaging with the traditional Sami Sita system and its concomitant laws and uh, practices. Our objective uh, has been to generate novel interdisciplinary artistic, political and cultural knowledge about the traditional Sami governance structures, practices and values um, and the ways in which they can be practiced in contemporary settings. The project is called a Sita School in recognition of the fact that uh, considering the ongoing colonization, our individual knowledge of the Sita system is limited. Uh, we, uh, none of us know a whole lot, there are some who know more, but we, in, in a sense, we are all learners and teachers uh, to one another and, and learning from one another. In addition, the engagement of participation of children and youth and also the older generation um, has been central to the project. And um, we have been producing scholarly, artistic uh, uh, and performative knowledge, uh, podcast series. Uh, we are editing a handbook in the Sami language. A children's book is coming out uh, uh, very soon, also in the Sami language. And a special journal issue um, uh, in the world's only Sami language academic journal, uh, Sami Tietalas Aikechala. Um, and also we have a web archive um, of the, all these material, uh, materials that we um, are producing. And this panel today draws uh, on this special uh, journal issue, the CETA school uh, special journal issue, um, some of which uh, some of the CETA school members are contributing uh, to Initially, we were about we were going to be five uh, uh, members or five people uh, in this panel today, but uh, due to very busy schedules this time of the year, two unfortunately weren't able to uh, join us. Each of us represent for about fifteen minutes, based on the articles in this uh, special journal issue, which uh, we all written in in the Sami, but obviously we'll be presenting in English. And at the end, we'll see if there are any questions or comments to, uh, to uh, one another, so we can have a brief conversation. So, uh, so without further ado, I will give the uh, floor to our first speaker, um, Asla Kornberg. So please, um, you can start by briefly introducing yourself. Skuvla olema Aasla ja Jonas Aila Neijasa Aaslat tai Aaslat Holmberg puolan Njörkkenis Tienulieis ja kiihtu poutehtusas seuraava tämän, tämän paneeliin. So my name is uh, uh, Aslak Holmberg and um, I come from uh, the village of Njörkken which is a uh, uh, north uh, Sami area. I live next to the uh, big river Tetnu. 
and I will be sharing um, about uh, Sami Sami knowledge uh, on the river and uh, salmon. Um, yes, so this is a, <clears throat> a sort of a summary of um, um, of my master's thesis and a bit um, extended um, um, scope. Um, while in my master's thesis, I looked into the Sami way of knowing about the river and the salmon um, and, uh, and the biologist's way of uh, knowing and compared those two knowledge systems. Then in this article, I also take a step uh, uh, further, further and um, consider what kind of management actions could be considered based on the Sami knowledge um, in, in today's situation. So <clears throat> I'll be speaking a bit uh, um, briefly, some general information about um, the river Tietnu and uh, Salmon there. And then I'll be um, speaking about Sami indigenous knowledge and uh, biological studies on the river and, uh, and Salmon. Yeah, weather better. I, I got my coffee delivered. I am so lucky. Oh, look at um and um yes then i'll briefly compare the um, um two knowledge systems what is um, similar and and perhaps what is um, challenge in in uh, when those two knowledge systems uh, try to um, uh, communicate um and in the end i i uh, propose some uh, um, management actions uh, based on on sami knowledge so I, I put the text changes the new normal there because that is really the case. We, we don't have any normal summers anymore. Um, yeah, just briefly, as I mentioned, I'm from Tetnu River Valley. I grew up uh, fishing salmon. Um, this is a summary of my master's thesis that I wrote in indigenous st studies in uh, University of uh, uh, Tromsø in, uh, on the Norwegian side of Sapmi. I am uh, currently vice president of the Sami Council and work with Arctic and environment issues as well as uh, research ethics. <clears throat> so Tetnu is um, um, in Sami, it can be translated the Great River, and um, it is um, um, more than 16,000 square kilometers uh, wide, the whole watershed, or uh, for um, those who don't speak in kilometers, it's uh, 6,300 square miles, um, the, um, the area of the watershed. So it's quite uh, big in our, our standards. Uh, it's also the most uh, diverse Atlantic salmon river in the world with um, um, more than 30 genetically distinct uh, salmon populations. And um, <clears throat> The people who live uh, in the river valley often refer to ourselves as uh, Chatsagatte Olomot, which uh, means um, the people of the shore or yeah, people who live next to the water. And um, yeah, salmon is an uh, essential part of uh, our way of uh, life. And it's uh, basically the reason why we have inhabited the uh, area in the first place. Well, um, if I'm to describe the situation in Tetno briefly, I would say that we are living in times of crisis. Um, first, in 2017, there were strong restrictions on salmon fishing, which targeted mainly the Sami traditional uh, fishing. Um, but um, after that, uh, especially in the past um, uh, three years, uh, there has been a strong decline in the salmon stocks. And uh, <clears throat> as a result, uh, then in 2021, it was the first time in history that um, there was a complete ban on salmon fishing in, in this river. Um, at the same time, there was a uh, invasion of this um, uh, new species, um, or it's um, new in such great numbers. We have had pink salmon um, uh, also previously, but this time it uh, for the first time outnumbered uh, the native Atlantic salmon. 
So there were about uh, uh, four times more pink salmon than there was Atlantic salmon. So we're facing a, a, a decline in the native species and, and uh, almost a skyrocketing um, amount of uh, pink salmon has been coming. So quite a dramatic change in the ecosystem. Um, <clears throat> and now it seems like for this summer there will be also a, a ban on, on salmon fishing. Uh, as I mentioned, we don't have really normal summers. Uh, there can be a flood throughout the summer. Some summers we've had very low water levels and uh, high water temperatures. So um, a few words on, on Sami uh, knowledge. Um, well, uh, first of all, Sami used to govern the, the fishing in River Detno in the upper parts of the stream um, until the 19th century. And um, uh, in the 17th century, it was still um, Sami only had the right to fish in the river. And of course, uh, fishing was governed uh, through uh, indigenous uh, knowledge, and um, it was done by Sida, which, as uh, Rauna mentioned in the beginning, is, uh, is or was the uh, traditional Sami governance structure, a, a village. And um, they, they organized the collective fishing methods in the see the structure and um, also solve um, possible disputes on the uh, fishing uh, places and, uh, and so on. Um, these collective fishing methods had um, um, very um, effective uh, forms of fishing. There was uh, like a cross, uh, cross river weir and um, it had to uh, be closely communicated on when to let salmon go through the 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 weir so that uh, there will be enough uh, salmon in the tributaries as well. Um, Sami knowledge holders um, recognize many threats to the to the salmon, such as increased um, erosion, increased predation, as well as uh, a large number of tourist uh, fishing. Also, climate change is uh, recognized as a threat and uh, the decline of uh, uh, the species that salmon feeds on in the ocean, um, as well as um, salmon farming and, um, and the lice and, and disease, as well as the um, genetic change that that can bring to the salmon. So <clears throat> um, it used to be done that um, the predators of salmon and the salmon juveniles um, um, were restricted strongly. Um, so, for example, uh, there was a lot of hunting of birds such as gooseanders and cormorants, um, seals and otters that also feed on salmon were hunted uh, much uh, more than they are nowadays, and uh, predatory fish like uh, pike, sea trout, uh, burbot uh, were, were also fished, uh, as well as uh, grayling and whitefish who um, eat the, the roes of, of the salmon. So there were um, strong actions in place to uh, limit the number of, of, of predators and thus uh, increase the uh, juvenile production of salmon. So <clears throat> Um, the biologists who study uh, the Etno, um there has been a, quite a long dispute between the Sami knowledge holders and the biologists on what are the main reasons of uh, decline or even is there such a strong decline as it's uh, claimed in the salmon stocks. Um, although now in the recent years it has become quite uh, evident that the number of salmon has uh, strongly uh, decreased, but um, there wasn't a consensus on that um, um, some time back. Um, and it's um, up until the recent years uh, that the biologists were concluding that um, overfishing is uh, basically the only significant uh, driver of uh, decline uh, in the salmon stocks. And um, 
uh, just uh, in the past uh, few years, um, uh, they have also changed their um, interpretation of the situation because um, such a fast uh, decline in the salmon stocks uh, that we have experienced, it uh, cannot be explained uh, with overfishing because uh, the juvenile production um, in the river doesn't uh, correlate with the small number of salmon returning uh, to the river. So something is happening to the uh, small the small salmon that um, are leaving Deatno to go to the ocean, uh, and then they are not uh, returning. So there are no clear explanations to what uh, is causing this, but uh, uh, one um, um, uh, reason, uh, likely reason, is that the food of salmon, uh, the capelin small fish, it has migrated. Uh, a couple of thousand kilometers north uh, due to warming waters and when salmon go to their uh, traditional uh, feeding uh, uh, territories then uh, they don't find any food there and then they don't um, grow and, and return as, as big salmon. <clears throat> yes, um, so there is uh, the um, what I call the Tana Research Group, and it has um, two members uh, from uh, Finland and two from Norway. They are fish uh, biologists, and um, they write the official uh, reports on the uh, status of the salmon stocks in the Tetno watershed. Um, they are mandated to consider Sami knowledge uh, in their reports. Um, um, but um, there are some uh, uh, obstacles or uh, some room for criticism, as I uh, see it. Um, so one thing is that the <clears throat> Sami knowledge uh, needs to be proved uh, in order to be uh, considered uh, relevant to, to the studies. Um, so they aim to um, consider the Sami knowledge um, and um, prove it with their methods that they have. And uh, if they cannot prove the Sami knowledge to be correct, then they conclude that it is untrue because we cannot, uh, in our methods, we cannot prove it to be true. But um, what is a uh, challenge there is uh, that um, their methods are based on um, calculating estimates and um, that requires um, a data or knowledge that can be transformed into a numerical form and uh, <clears throat> not all uh, sami knowledge can be presented in numerical form such as um, uh, the behavior of salmon or um, that salmon needs uh, to have peace at uh, the time of spawning, it can be quite challenging to quantify all types of um, uh, Sami knowledge. And then it's, uh, if you cannot quantify it, then you cannot uh, calculate estimates. Um, and um, they don't really have uh, efficient methods for uh, evaluating qualitative knowledge. Um, so a lot of that is uh, simply left out of, of consideration. Um, some Sami knowledge uh, could be quantified, uh, but it's not, uh, such as uh, knowledge on the uh, amount of uh, spawning grounds or reds that um, has um, um, diminished or, or been lost uh, due to erosion. There is a lot of uh, areas that used to have uh, gravel uh, in the bottom of the river, but uh, it has been covered by, uh, by sand or, or mud nowadays, which means that there is less, uh, less space for salmon to spawn. Um, also, the impact of uh, predators could be uh, quantified. And um, just in last uh, summer, there was the first uh, <clears throat> study released that actually tries to do this to an extent and 
and they do conclude that the uh, predation is a uh, is a significant uh, force uh, uh, impacting negatively the salmon uh, juvenile survival and uh, and uh, also then the, um, the salmon production potential of the river. Um, so what happens when they try to uh, estimate uh, each of the issues that the Sami knowledge holders raise, uh, they try to address them one by one. And uh, when they cannot um, prove that uh, this specific issue would be a uh, strong enough force to cause a decline in the salmon stock. So, and after evaluating each of the issues that the knowledge holders raise, or um, many of them, um, they conclude that uh, none of these issues individually can, can be the cause of decline of salmon stocks. But what is uh, missing is um, a more of a holistic um, evaluation of the impacts. Because it's not the claim that uh, only one issue is the cause of decline, but um, the cumulative impact of all the changes that have happened in the salmon's uh, um, environment and, and uh, that impacted uh, through its different stages of uh, its uh, life cycle, that um, the cumulative impacts are, are causing the uh, decline in the salmon stocks. But uh, this um, um, is not uh, holistically uh, evaluated in the biological um, studies. Yeah, I think uh, this is my final slide. Um, so what could be considered uh, um, to be done uh, in this uh, situation based on Sami knowledge? Well, everything currently points um, towards the ocean, but that is where the biggest uh, problem or biggest changes have happened and in the ocean survival. So what um, should be considered is um, uh, looking into the, the status of the um, uh, salmon uh, food species, which also are fished to feed uh, salmon that are in the salmon farms, and and some of these stocks have uh, have strongly declined or, as was mentioned, uh, migrated northward. So it should be considered if um, uh, fishing of these species could be uh, moderated so that there would be more food for salmon. Uh, also regulating the salmon farming and, uh, and um, mitigating the negative impacts of open net farms should be uh, done. Um, actions to strengthen the juvenile production of salmon, uh, such as decreasing the number of predators um, by fishing the pre predatory fish or, or hunting the uh, species that feed on salmon. Uh, as well as uh, restoring the spawning reds that have been lost um, and slowing down erosion, um, as has been done before by strengthening the uh, river banks with, with rocks and so on. Also regulating the fishing pressure uh, should be done um, and shifting the fishing pressure to other species. So. Atlantic salmon is not the only species that we have. Of course, now we have the uh, invasive pink salmon, um, which um, is a very good fish when it arrives to the river, but it has to be caught uh, immediately before it starts to uh, reach its uh, spawning state and, and it um, changes um, the, the taste of the fish. Also, we have plenty of sea trout, the grayling pike, which uh, could be fished more instead of salmon. Uh, also stronger regulation of uh, tourist fishing, both the uh, times and catches wise uh, could be done. Um, there should be periods when salmon do have a piece in the river so that there are not uh, fishers all the time in the river uh, disturbing the salmon, especially at the time of uh, spawning. Um, and also uh, releasing um, the big salmon should be considered, uh, of course, those that are caught alive, uh, because uh, there is a decline in the number of big salmon that also produce a lot of 
lot of juveniles and and uh, ensure the continuation of the of the big salmon in the river yes that was uh, what i wanted to to share with you so kiihtu thank you Ollu kiihto asvat nyt niin hui mielellä kiittävässä ja äike köytelis äh, saakka vuorosta nä tääl maittai hui äike köytelis ollu mui mielas tääl so thank you asvat as like for very um, interesting and very timely um, presentation it's something that is currently being very actively discussed uh, and debated along the river as the fishing season um, now closed um, would be approaching thank you Mm. The next uh, speaker is um, Olan Tilab, and um, uh, he will be uh, also presenting on CETAS. And I will. Um, well, why don't you, Olan, introduce yourself first, and uh, then I'll put the map up. So, Lei Buere, Olan Te. Joo, Olu Kihtu. Kun Peevi Puokka ja Nammala Oulantti Lappa ja, ja mulla Niere Hennorakas ja, ja, ja mun parkka juristan ja tuon mun muistelan Tantilalas vuorossa muu, mun artikkala Pirra, mä mun tutkan Tsaalalas kaltui ja mä, meitä mun yhtä oli Turnosa, Turnosa Saami siitä Pirra. So, hello everyone. My name is Oulant Lappa. I come from Enora, Enotekia, uh, from the Finnish part of, of Samiland. And uh, I work, work as, a, as a lawyer. Uh, at the moment, I'm, I'm working in, in the Sami Council. And I have previously also worked in, in uh, Sami Parliament in Finland. And, Minority Rights Group International. And I have been uh, involved in the CEDA School project uh, since, the, uh, since the beginning of the project. And uh, I'm now, now telling you uh, briefly about, about my article that I have uh, done uh, on, on this, uh, this project. So the objective of, of my, my article, uh, Sami village, villages and, and villagers of uh, Turnosa Sapmi in, in written sources uh, was to research what written sources tell about uh, the juridical status of, of the CEDAS or I'm now translating CEDAS in English as, as uh, Sami villages. And uh, the status of the CEDAS, especially as, as collectives uh, and of the members of the CEDAS. And my, my research method was uh, legal history. And my research question was what, what was the legal status of CEDA? and see the members in different eras. How has it changed and why? And I also studied if, if the CEDAS had uh, this kind of inner jurisdiction. And... No, joo, tuon saat riheisyyttäis taltan. Tällä just se porre, porre aikitan. Kartta, pokti houta. So... Uh, Rauna is now now showing showing you a map and uh, the geographical. Uh, I can just briefly explain about the map. So in in this map you you can see uh, the Cedars, the Sami villages and, and their borders, and uh, the geographical area where. What I uh, studied in, in my article was, was the Turnosasami, and, and it consisted uh, the Sidas uh, Tikkevari, Sikkevari Raunala, so, Sotivari, Kotekeinu, 
uh, Aujo Varila, Pojauri, and from, from uh, till, till mid 17th century Peltojauri and uh, also Teenu Siita and Ohtsejoka. And uh, I, I can just roughly say that uh, uh, this is, uh, it's kind of the, the same area which is nowadays in the in the borders of municipality of Kiruna in Swedish side and in the borders of municipalities of Enontekiö and Utsjoki in Finnish side and partly in, uh, I think municipalities called Kautukeino Karasjok and, and Tana in Norwegian side and uh, uh, actually it was uh, uh, the area was first divided in uh, in uh, in the middle of 18th century when when there there became the border uh, between uh, Denmark, Norway, and uh, and Sweden. And uh, the written sources, what I what I, what I study, where uh, I, I can say that the oldest ones were were from from the seventeenth, uh, I mean sixteenth century, and that is of course the era when when we we find uh, written sources, historical written sources, and uh, for example, first. Uh, taxation records uh, uh, of, of uh, Swedish, the Kingdom of Sweden uh, were published uh, on, on the middle of uh, the 16th century. And, and uh, uh, these, these uh, written sources, for example, uh, consist uh, taxation records and, and court, court books but uh, of of course, uh, then especially the modern era uh, sources are mostly uh, studies and, and and research, especially legal historical uh, researches that have been made made on the Cedars. And uh, from the year. Uh, 1809 till today, the research uh, focuses on, on, on those cedars and the areas that were divided by the, by the borders of, of, uh, of the nation states and the parts that after that became under the governance of, of uh, Russian, Finland and, and Tin. Finland and and these are these are uh, the areas of of Enontekiö and Utsuki, which which were part part of the old Turnosa uh, Sami or 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 Tornio Samiland. And I can just briefly tell about what is what is Sida and. Uh, what are the Sami villages? And uh, Sida is, is a very old land, a very old land and water using unit. And uh, the origin of the Sida unit system is, is not known. Uh, it's specifically Sami unit and it has not born under the influence of Nordic states, according to the studies. And uh, the family-based areas or lands form an economical body or, or annual fishing, uh, hunting and uh, reindeer herding economy for the annual cycle. And uh, Sidas had, had borders between each other and Sida members had so-called tax lands inside Sidas. And as you see, see, see from this, this map that there, there are, uh, there are both, both borders between, between Sidas, but, but there, there used, 
used to also be a border between uh, CEDAS and uh, agricultural communities. So uh, agricultural communities or, or, or farmers lived, lived above uh, of, of these, or, or I mean below the the uh, CEDA, CEDA uh, or, or the SAPMI. And the border was called uh, uh, Sami Ratti or, or, or Sami border. And uh, I'm not sure if you can see me or if you can see the map. I'm just ensuring Rauna that uh, can, can you see me on, on the record? Yes, you are, uh, yeah, you are in a small. Um, do you want to have the map uh, taken down or? Well, the map can be on. In you can there. Be, you, you, I can see you both. Okay. So yeah, you are because, on a smaller screen. Yeah, okay. I'm just ensuring because I can only see you and, and the map. Okay. So uh, the first, uh, as I already told earlier, the first uh, taxation documents that tell about CEDAS appear on the 16th century. And I, I can say that before the first uh, settlement uh, placard of the year 1000, 673, the areas of CEDAS were, were probably almost exclusively in, inhabited by the Samis. But uh, official mark the CEDA members to the text and other official records uh, with the term LAP. And in, in these particular documents, the term LAP uh, did not mean uh, ethnicity but it meant uh, the livelihood that the person practiced and, and, the, and the livelihoods that uh, were, were called in these uh, uh, documents, so-called so lab livelihoods were reindeer herding, hunting and, and fishing. And it was uh, before the, the placard, it was only allowed to practice these uh, aforementioned uh, livelihoods in, inside the, the cedars. But uh, after the, the first uh, settlement placard uh, by, by the Kingdom of, of, of Sweden in the in 17th, 17th century, more and more uh, settlers invaded the, the lands of Sida and uh, it was kind of a kingdom of Sweden, I would say, colonialistic strategy to, to urge Finns and Swedes to, to move to, to Sapmi and, and inside the Sida areas. And uh, they, they were uh, the kingdom of Sweden, for example, offered, uh, for example, uh, for these. Uh, uh, persons who, who moved to, to in, inside the uh, CEDA area state, they were promised uh, 50 years of uh, tax exemptions and uh, exemption from, from the military. And also in, in the 17th century, there, there were also established mines in, in the uh, Julev Sapmi area, uh, for example, NASA, NASA mountain. And uh, so they, the kingdom of Sweden wanted to have uh, persons working there. Uh, but about the legal uh, status of, of, of the CEDAS. Uh, the legal history research shows that uh, the members of the CEDAS owned their tax lands and that CEDAS had a collective responsibility to, to pay taxes to the kingdoms uh, on the lands of the CEDAS. And uh, in the 17th and 18th century, the, the local jurisdiction was in the hands of district courts and the jury consisted of the members of CEDA. And this was important issue because it meant that the Sami 
sense of justice was taken into, into account in, in court. And there are also court cases that prove that uh, uh, customary law was, was recognized in, in the jurisdiction. Uh, however, there, there's no clear written evidence uh, that uh, if, if CEDAS had their own customary jurisdiction system in, in at least in the western part of, of the Tornusami land. But uh, uh, however, in in out eastern part of, of the Sapmi, especially in the in the Skold Sami communities, and an own customary jurisdiction has has uh, existed. And uh, nation state, or I would say kingdom borders, came to Sapmi in the uh, 18th century, as I mentioned, between the border between Denmark, Norway, and and Sweden in in in, in 1751, and this also led to a border agreement which included the protocol. Lappe uh, is that recognized the rights of the Sami people to move across the state borders with the reindeers. And the Kingdom of Sweden recognized at least until the middle of the 18th century that the members of the CEDAS owned their tax lands and, and the right was the same as uh, farmers' right to their land property. And this is, for example, proved uh, in the doctoral thesis by Kaisa Korpiak and, and Ms. Johan Päivio. And uh, studies also show that the state does not nation states do not have a so-called legal title to the lands and waters of, of, of the CEDAS, CEDA communities, although they, they currently administer the major part of them. Uh, the ancient CEDAS uh, disappeared from the official documents in Finland at, uh, at the latest when, when Finland became part of Russia in the, in the 19th century. Uh, even if the CEDA members paid taxes on, on CEDA lands until the 90, uh, 1920s, the, the tax that they paid was defined as land tax, which was paid on, on uh, uh, land property in some parts of the Sami region in uh, the, the current Sami region in Finland, uh, the CEDA members became, uh, uh, I mean, the, the recent uh, Sami region or, or uh, the eastern part of, of the Tornu Sami region, the, the CEDA members uh, became uh, uh, kind of a, farm owners, at least in the official documents in the 19th century, because this was a way to protect the ancient and immemorial family tax lands and so that they did not fall into the hands of the state. And uh, subsequent border closures in, in 19th century between Finland and uh, still under Russian control at the time and, and, uh, and Norway and then, and then Sweden had a profound, profound in, impact on reindeer herding Sami. Uh, many of them were forced to move from their traditional lands to new places. And uh, there are many reasons why the ancient cedars disappeared on, 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 at least from the official documents and, and uh, even on daily life. The main reason where the division of, of, of the CEDAS by the state board, nation state borders, changes in the reindeer herding, and the transfer of decision making power on, on land issues from the local district courts to the state administ administration. And uh, I can just briefly say that it was an interesting research work, but also very challenging. Uh, I had to read and analyze texts that were written in old Swedish language and 
even if they were transcribed into a modern spelling. And uh, it was also uh, hard work to translate them into Northern Sami and find uh, right terminology. And uh, I can also mention that I, I also wrote, wrote a shorter article that focused on how the juridical status of the CEDAS as collectives and the members of the CEDAS is recognizing the special laws and preliminary works of laws in the era of independence of Finland. But I think that was uh, everything I, I could tell briefly about this very broad uh, topic. Uh, so thank you very much. Kiitos Ollo Aulante, hui mielläkin tavas autan puktimis tänä aalo mielläkin tavas kullat tänään historia. Thank you Aulanti uh, Aulanti for a very important um, and interesting talk. Uh, is it's so important to have the two uh, of your uh, articles in this um, <clears throat> special issue that we are editing um, as part of the Sida uh, School, because um, although as you mentioned there there are um, there is existing research uh, to an extent on the CETA, uh, the legal historical scholarship in particular, but very little in the Sami language. So, uh, um, like scholarship in the Sami language. So it's it's so important to uh, have the two articles uh, by you coming out now in the Sami in the Sami language. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, so I then. Uh, turn to my presentation and we'll uh, share my screen again. Um, my slide is this one. And um, this, um, well, uh, I already introduced myself. Um, I'm Jonna Jon Anna Kirsteräynä. Mulla on maitia no kätti seerettä no maaslat. Mulla on patje tienus, patje tienu koulus kärjes nerkkalaakka ferran joas. Ja tääl parkan Latvian universiteetas Raavan järkkäs maangimus vihta ja autol tän leitjen huikuhka parken Kanadas maangimuksen Toronto universiteetas. So I am um, just uh, quickly introducing myself again. Um, I'm also from the River Tietno, like Asla, so uh, from the um, up, up, upstream from him. And uh, currently I live in Rovaniemi, uh, where I work at the University of Lapland for the past five years. And before that, um, I used to live and work in Canada most uh, recently in, at the University of uh, Toronto. And, and I will be presenting um, our um, uh, article in, in this uh, special issue that uh, I'm trying to get rid of this panel here, but obviously it's not going anywhere, so I have to stick it here. Uh, this is an article that we have co-authored, I have co-authored with Asta Balto, also a member of our CETA school, and um, it, uh, uh, it talk, talks about uh, what we have conceived as a Sami concept of uh, relationality. And I will introduce the, the four different uh, practices briefly that we uh, consider in our article. And um, as we all know, um, the principle of rela relationality is the bedrock of uh, indigenous worldviews. And it is also the foundation, uh, a foundational concept of indigenous research and shapes, for example, indigenous research methodologies. In our article, we propose that the Sami term of Tastallan and, and its practices uh, related to it uh, correspond to the indigenous principle of relationality. And as I mentioned, we consider four common practices of, of Tastallan and examine how of Tastallan can serve as a contemporary means and method of resolving some pressing uh, social and political challenges in today's Sami society. We also consider uh, the ways in which 
of the Stalin practices can function as a, a traditional Sami uh, methods of conflict resolution or reconciliation, uh, methods that are frequently used but uh, whose significance we may not always recognize or acknowledge. The questions that we ask in our article is that how is Ofta Stalin a Sami way of reconciliation, resol uh, resolving disputes, and also a way of acquiring new understanding into a vexing problem, um, a way of creating new knowledge, and in this way, uh, how it can contribute to advancing Sami society and well being today. And also, that why um, um, it's important to highlight the signific significance of uh, Ofta Stalin practices and their role in contemporary Sami society. The four of the Stalin practices we consider in our uh, paper include Tervahallan, Folkastallan, Tolastallan and Kafestallan. Um, these are fairly straightforward Sami practices but are hard to translate into English. We have chosen these because they are very common and carry considerable cultural significance in Sami society still today. In addition to the practical acti activity itself, these practices often consist of spiritual dimensions that remain uh, frequently invisible to those who are not familiar with the practices or history uh, behind uh, them. So in addition to the practical skills, intergenerational knowledge of inter interdependence with the land is being transferred through these of the Stalin practices. Um, so the first one um, is uh, Tervahallan. So in simple terms, Tervahallan can be uh, translated as creating. So it denotes the act of creating, but comprises several dimensions and meanings. It highlights our belonging to people and places, as well as uh, allows us to get to know other uh, people. According to the Sami practice of creating, we shake hands and say pures. The uh, verb tervahit uh, derives from the word tirvas, meaning health. And to create by saying pures, we are wishing health and well being to the other person. And when Sami meet for the first time, we also commonly ask where the other person is from. We ask whose son or daughter the other person is. And in that way, we find out which family or new uh, or um, our new acquaintance belongs to and whether the person is related to uh, us. Uh, in short, um, Tervahallan activates kinship, which is the second uh, uh, Oltastallan practice we consider. So Folkastallan. Uh, Folkastallan is a practice where we together, somebody with somebody else, explore, or in a group even, uh, explore and consider our kinship ties to Sami families and whether we can find a bind, usually a common relative, that connects the two people together. Sometimes we have to rely on the knowledge of elders or genealogical books. If we don't find uh, a common relative, um, Sami often consider other ties through marriage, work networks or co common acquaintances. So there's this desire to find how um, uh, yourself and the other person are connected. This kinship knowledge uh, strengthens the sense of belonging to Sami and within the Sami people. Non-Sami people uh, sometimes joke about the expansive concept of Sami kinship, which according to them, uh, uh, 18th cousins are still considered close relatives. Creating places is also a way of connecting with those places. When we travel through a place, a Sami may yoik, or, uh, or yoik the place or create and talk to the place by saying the name of the place aloud and other places around it. It is also common uh, to connect to certain place by telling stories um, about that place or people living in that place. And yoiking, uh, which is the Sami way of um, kind of it's not singing, kind of like musical expression. Um, uh, yoiking um, is another way of creating uh, other people and places. Someone who knows the other person's yoik and yoiks it upon meeting them um, is respective and well received. Yoiks also reveal kinship relations beyond the individual. It sort of like places the individual in this network of, of relations. And the uh, 
actually this is a wrong order. Uh, I will talk about the Kafestallan, which is, uh, my apologies, I don't know what this is doing now. Um, there we go. Kafestallan or simply uh, drinking coffee. It's another common practice. Most Sami are very familiar with the exp uh, expression Father Kafestalla or Volkotal Kafestalla. In other words, let's go and have some coffee. When someone comes to visit, they are always at least given a cup of coffee. Uh, it is considered a basic responsibility, and children learn from an early age uh, on that uh, visitors are always offered coffee and that they need to make it if adults happen, uh, uh, not, uh, happen not to be in the house. In other words, it's something that it's the basic um, uh, custom that coffee is always offered, if nothing else, to a person who drops in. Importantly, however, Kävistalan is not only about drinking coffee, but the main function is the social interaction. It is a tradition that loosens uh, one's conversation skills. It has also been used as a research method in uh, Sami research. So Kävistalan advances social relations. Traditionally, it has been a means that enables people in small communities to visit, share information, and check on each other's well-being, that everything is all right with them. Even though this may no longer be so common, this kind of dropping uh, uh, in uh, for a cup of coffee without prearranging something, um, given that uh, not, not, it's not being so common because of the demographic changes and migration to urban areas, Kafestalan has not lost its power and meaning. It is an important part of working life and meetings. Coffee breaks are informal arenas where we often spend longer periods of time in contemplating together or debating a timely issue or pressing challenge, and which may result in new knowledge and awareness. At the same time, we uh, must keep in mind that we cannot idealize Kafestalan practices or say that there are only obviously many people around the world drink coffee and, and it, this is a common practice in most places in the world. So that is not only a Sami practice, but uh, it has certain cultural significance as well, uh, besides being a very common daily um, occurrence. But that we, uh, so we want also emphasize that it cannot be idealized also because uh, it can be used in meetings or workplace as a way of excluding also certain individuals from the conversations. And it can uh, create power relations or reinforce existing ones, such as um, old boys uh, networks. Asami uh, frequently cafestallet uh, in the woods by the fire. Tolastallan, which is, is in this list, uh, you can see the four, uh, third one, or making and sitting by the fire is one of the Oftastallan uh, practices also we considered. Often Tolastallan and Kävestallan go hand in hand in that nearly always when Sami lights a fire in the woods or up in the mountains um, or in the lavu, which you can see in the picture, they also uh, make a pot of co uh, coffee. One Tolastallan custom is to pour a little coffee either from the pot or one's own cup to the fireplace before drinking it yourself. Some Sami know that they are pouring coffee to Sarahka, the Sami female spirit of the Lavu, uh, Lavu being the Sami tipi you see, see in this picture, who lives under the fireplace. Others uh, uh, do this pouring coffee without knowing why they are doing it or for what purpose. It just has become a custom that they have learned. Sarahka has the power to create. Her name literally means the woman who creates and brings life to existence. She protects the love and uh, pregnant women and also assists at uh, childbirth. Sharing coffee with her is a way of thanking her and give respect to her skills and gifts. So then uh, I'm going to uh, talk briefly about how Oftastalan can be considered as a, a Sami dispute resolu a resolution mechanism. A central aspect of indigenous worldviews is seeking balance, which takes place in countless ways. We seek balance with our environments through gifts and reciprocity, but also traditional practices of reconciliation. 
we commonly conciliate it with people also other than humans, like uh, non-human beings, as well as with the land and the spirit world. One way of conciliation with our environment is to ask the land a permission to stop or overnight at the specific site. We also may negotiate um, with the spirits of the land, particularly when we are in need of protection or want to express our gratitude. The permission can also be asked silently, like if you're asking a permission to stay overnight, uh, put up our lava, for example, can be asked silently, uh, and it involves the obligation to keep the place tidy. According to some Sami scholars, asking permission from the land is a traditional Sami governance practice that often remains invisible to the non-Sami. As an example of a reconciliation practice, uh, Sami uh, legal scholar Ande Sombi mentions her mother uh, as someone who, uh, whom people used to rely on when there was a disagreement in, uh, in the family. His mother, the oldest in the large family, uh, starts by visiting uh, the disagreeing parties individually. Afterwards, she calls them, but rarely mentions the disagreement. Instead, she indirectly discusses the other party and their positive qualities and mentions the importance of reconciling. There are no winners or losers in her method, but rather she establishes a space for goodwill that enables and paves way for finding a common path uh, forward. Her method of indirect communication is a very common practice that has been used in other contexts as well, such as the Alta River conflict in the late 70s and early 80s, considered a watershed in Sami Nordic relations and the Sami policy in Norway. And I, don't, I won't go into the details of the conflict itself, uh, but sort of look at uh, the Oftastalan principles in that context. So internally, the issue of hydroelectric construction in the Alta River divided many Sami families. When some adamantly opposed and joined the protests at the construction site, while others approved the government of Norway's decision to construct this dam. Particularly the older generation was concerned that the younger Sami activists were ruining their future in the barricades. For the, uh, the activists getting arrested was seen as an honor while the grandparents were often horrified and ashamed for quote unquote, breaking the law. Another example that has also divided Sami families is homosexuality. The Christian relatives opposing homosexuality may have attempted to talk somebody out of it and seen it as a sickness. And as our uh, examples demonstrate, Kafestallan in particular has been a common method of finding a path forward, both in the Alta case, Alta uh, river conflict, and uh, this uh, vexing question of homosexuality. Um, it has allowed and enabled uh, a finding a compromise, like, uh, like this sort of using a similar method that Ande Zombie talks about, like spending time with the disagreeing parties and talking about the issue, sometimes not directly, but indirectly and finding um, a compromise uh, uh, within, within the family that allows them to move forward, even, even though they may not agree on each other's views and positions. So these and other examples demonstrate how traditional practices uh, that on the surface appear very mundane may advance learning and reconciliation and create new understanding and knowledge. Oftestalan does not always mean a safe or comfortable space, but it does require a basic respect for one another and desire to maintain balance in social relations. Sami Oftestalan practices offer a way of raising and discussing issues where there's a disagreement but where we can find through the process of deliberation and behaving, the Sami term, Olmoshvuotta, we can find a common space or at least an understanding that enables everyone uh, um, not necessarily to come together, but move forward uh, when uh, not everything can be agreed upon. At the same time, we need to obviously acknowledge that not everything can or need to be reconciled. For example, once uh, sexuality is not a matter of reconciliation. What we do suggest, however, in our article that uh, through of the Stalin practices, we may expand our collective and individual understanding and learn from one another, fears, attitudes, views, biases, and so on. So that oppression and exclusion 
at least diminishes and acceptance, acceptance uh, gains more ground. For more than a uh, hundred years, the Sami have been active in organizing. Today we have uh, the established political institutions of the Sami parliaments, the Sami council, and countless bigger and smaller Sami organizations and associations. There's a joke that we Sami have an association in every cape of the river. The Sami organizing has been a positive force in many ways, yet at the same time, we are still struggling with uh, uh, some of the basic problems and the same problems uh, as the first Sami organizations 100 years ago. And it has to do in particular what Olanti was talking about, the, the, the land rights, um, uh, the lack of recognition of Sami land rights, which results in uh, difficulties to carry on the traditional Sami livelihoods, particularly reindeer herding. So in our article, we argue that our formal avenues and mechanisms have proven to be uh, inadequate in finding solutions to today's big issues. They have provided us a certain space. Um, we are not saying that they are not important, but we are suggesting that in addition to our institutions and organizations, we need additional ways and tools to deliberate and find answers. So we thus propose that, that we need to recognize the significance and potential of our basic, very basic, very daily of the Stalin practices on par with our formal mechanisms um, and organizations. So what we suggest uh, is that in addition to our existing structures, we more con consciously acknowledge and engage with our of the Stalin practices uh, we've discussed or I've discussed here to find common ground and extend and advance our understanding, our shared understanding on the big issues on the table. So it's well known that current Sami affairs are uh, widely debated. Um, sorry about that again. It's my super sensitive uh, mouse. So it's well known that current Sami um, affairs are widely deba debated in coffee, coffee breaks in the woods, uh, in the lava, around the fire, and the ways of del deliberation in these arenas compared to meeting rooms may differ. So we suggest that these two complement one another and that in the formal arenas, there's a need to recognize the importance of the informal deliberations and their contributions to public and political debate. So in conclusion, of the Stalin practices and customs are a Sami traditional method of acquiring knowledge and advanced collective understanding. And we, the Sami ourselves, need to start seeing the value of these practices also as a means of conflict and dispute uh, resolution among ourselves in particular, on the one hand, and on the other, contribute to the promotion of uh, the well being and capacity building in contemporary Sami society. So I finished there. Kiitu Ollu. Thank you for your attention. I will stop sharing my screen now. And I think maybe we can all turn our mic uh, cameras on for a few minutes. And uh, in conclusion, have if there are any questions to one another, please ask. I have actually a couple to you both, but if you have uh, anything, please share comments or questions. Joo, kiihtu Valräynä. Meilläkin tavas outan puhtimis. Thank you, Räynä, for that uh, interesting presentation. Um, yeah, I have a few um, comments or questions. Um, maybe uh, first to, to Oland, so Räynä, you can get uh, catch your breath after your presentation. Um, well, I was thinking uh, regarding what uh, Olanda you spoke about uh, the historic rights of uh, of sea dust, and then perhaps it would be interesting to hear um, a few thoughts on on um, how do you see the um, these rights today, um, as as I see that they are unceded rights; they have never been given away or even officially taken away just that they have in practice uh, ceased to um, guide the, the way that these areas are governed 
So I'm thinking, especially in the context of the Girias uh, case from the Supreme Court of Sweden, then how do you see the, um, the unceded rights of a CEDAS um, in today's uh, society? Yes, thank you for, for your question, Asla. And uh, uh, it is true, uh, as I mentioned, that the uh, CEDAS have uh, disappeared from, from the official documents, but, but uh, the rights of the CEDAS have, have not disappeared. And uh, they exist. And uh, of course, they are partly uh, also recognized in, in, uh, in our current legal systems, perhaps not in Finland, but for example, in, in, in Sweden, the, the Reindeer Herding Act is at least in some parts based on, on the same, uh, same principles uh, and uh, same uh, may, maybe as not a strong rights but uh, uh, the right the ground of the rights are are based based on the CEDAS and uh, uh, as you mentioned the Girias court case I think that was an a uh, good example that the uh, uh, state tried to kind of remove rights from, from the Sami reindeer herding communities by, by an act, but uh, the Kirias uh, Sami village or reindeer herding uh, community could uh, prove that uh, they have uh, the immemorial uh, right to, to hunting and, and fishing in the area. And, and it was also based on uh, legal historical uh, uh, studies and, and uh, documents from, from the era when, when the CEDA uh, rights were recognized in, in the kingdom of, of Sweden. Yeah, Keith. Uh, thank you, Ovlante. Yeah, I think that is uh, one um, very interesting example of how Sami collective rights have been recognized in in recent um, uh, court cases a couple of years back, the Kirias case. Um, and yeah, Rauna, um, <laughs> yeah, I was thinking that the um, how much of the world's uh, problems would be solved just by adopting this uh, beauty law we practice, like asking for permission as a standard practice, like uh, it is basically just a yeah, basic courtesy, right? Like when you go to somewhere, you introduce yourself, you tell what are you thinking, am I welcome here, can I do this here? So it's a pretty good, um, good uh, starting point for any, any activity. And yeah, it was also interesting to see how um, it would be good to look into how to take these um, um, concepts or practices into, uh, into account more consciously in, in organizing uh, different kinds of events uh, today. Like I think many of them are part of events that we organize, but maybe it hasn't been considered so much in detail. What is the um, purpose of this and this and what is the function? Um, but what I was thinking was this, you had many, many words with the same suffix, like uh, stallan, hallan, like fuelka, uh, stallan, um, järva, hallan. We also have the kula, hallan, which is the basic um, basic form of communication so i was thinking if if you have given this uh, any uh, linguistic uh, consideration or spoken to any uh, linguistics because it's an interesting suffix because as i understand it it describes something that uh, takes place uh, 
for a while. It's not something really quick, but it takes uh, place for a while and continuously, but not intensively necessarily. But yeah, I'm just thinking about the, um, because there was this linguistic similarity. Yeah, thanks for that, uh, for bring, uh, bringing attention to that. It's something that uh, we don't really consider in, in the article. We uh, actually say that, that this is interesting, that the ending, the same ending, or similar ending in all of these terms, that we leave it to a linguist to consider. But actually what you're just pointing out, that, that there is this temporality, that it's not one of like the Sami, uh, the way in which Sami verbs work, there is one verb for something that happens quickly or once, and then there are verbs uh, that uh, in one word say that uh, it indicates that it's, it's a longer term process, that it's, it, that, or it takes longer, it's longer but, uh, in terms of um, time. So it's probably something that actually we could mention, even though we don't go into linguistics, that they, there is this kind of temporality, like a longer time period involved in this, that it can be like Kafestal and it can take, sometimes it's even supposed to be five minutes, it can uh, uh, become to a, uh, turn into half an hour a break or a very intense conversation or deliberation or something, and, and or something that, that starts uh, today and then may continue next week or next month. So that's that's thanks for uh, pointing that out because uh, our articles they haven't been published yet, so we still have a chance to uh, uh, revise if we um, decide to do so. So thanks for that question. So if I can ask them um, uh, my questions, um, we have a few minutes left. I really enjoyed both of the presentations, uh, although I have read the papers, but hearing them again, it always brings new uh, things to mind. And also, um, I was wondering that are biologists doing much research uh, on the ocean or as extensively as they are doing uh, or doing research in the Deatno River? And the second question is kind of like more um, like your thoughts on um, uh, why do you think that uh, collaboration between biologists and Sami knowledge holders uh, appears so difficult. Like there, uh, this is not my area of expertise, but I was looking into something else and I came across that biologists and indigenous knowledge holders have been collaborating since the 90s. So, so it's not something that the Tana uh, research group would have to invent, like it's being conducted. It's, there is a lot of examples around the world. So why is it so difficult in that? No. So if I ask you first, and then I go to Oland's question. Yeah, Pete. Um, well, um, at least there is a growing emphasis on on studying the situation in the ocean. But um, um, the mandate of the the Tana or Tetno fishing um, Tana research group, as I call them, um, it is in the freshwater. So that is. Uh, and that was what was my main focus in my article to look at the studies uh, here. But um, um, I know at least some people who are involved in the um, that no research uh, have been uh, conducting um, studies in the ocean. And there was a recent article published in the science uh, journal um, in January this year that uh, did conclude that uh, uh, overfishing of uh, um, Atlantic salmon's uh, uh, food species uh, has uh, had an impact on the um, on the salmon in a way that it has uh, decreased uh, the size of the salmon. So there was a direct link um, drawn uh, between catching of uh, other type of fish actually to feed the farmed salmon and uh, by this, um, it meant that there was not enough food for the wild salmon to feed and grow. So by feeding the salmon in the cage, you were stealing the food from the wild wild salmon. Um, but um, yes, at least it has been recognized in the past couple of years that there is a need to focus much more in the ocean because there are so many questions that are not known. Um, to the second question, 
Uh, yeah, I mean, there is a long institutional history in this research in, in Dethno and um, um, I would say, I guess it has started off in the wrong foot and people have quite early on developed their own uh, view of both the Sami have their own view of the biologists and the biologists have their own view of, of the Sami. So I think they they started off uh, <laughs> on the wrong foot, so to speak. And uh, um, after it was so clear that uh, we don't believe what you say and you don't really believe what we say. So here we are. So I think that is not the most fruitful uh, place to start building collaboration. Um, however, I do see that uh, there is some some change happening there now, and we have at least been planning on some joint um, uh, projects where where we would build these methods of uh, respectfully uh, engaging both uh, sami knowledge holders and, and biologists in in uh, doing studies on on death so i see some uh, good uh, um, good uh, advancement or at least potential there it was like thank you Aslat. good to hear that it at least it might be changing and moving to a moving to toward a more collaborative uh, uh, direction. Uh, the question I had to um, uh, Olanti um, was that: What are your thoughts on reclaiming, based on your research uh, um, and your work more broadly? Uh, what are your thoughts on reclaiming, like sort of like picking on what us like? Uh, a building on what Aslak was asking, your thoughts on reclaiming CETAs and or CETA practices today? Like what, what, what are the kind of the options and possibilities and potential? You are key to, thank you for your question, Rauna. And uh, well, at, as it has, probably already been said in also in, in our discussion that uh, CEDA, CEDA still exists, for example, in, in reindeer herding communities and uh, it has the recent uh, reindeer herding CEDA has uh, kind of been, uh, I think it has been uh, the progress that we are now uh, uh, during this point, it, it, there, there, there have been many different kind of uh, reasons. Uh, as I already mentioned, the nation state borders, the change in change in, in uh, administration, and uh, the reindeer herding seed is, is uh, has had to kind of uh, survive in in this kind of uh, uh, pressure, but uh, the current situation, especially in Finland, is is so that if, even if we have, a, even if the reindeer herding cedars exist, they are not recognized uh, in the legal system. Uh, in, in, in the acts and laws and and that that is one of the reasons why why uh, Sami reindeer herding is uh, and the customary uh, laws of the reindeer herding communities are in a, in a in a very unprotected and uh, and sensitive uh, uh, sensitive uh, uh, situation. Of course, uh, I, I would. There would be many many issues that uh, uh, could be kind of uh, reclaimed or revitalized. But I, I think one one could be uh, one concrete issue is that uh, Samis had uh, or or the members of the Sidas had. Uh, uh, jurisdiction uh, 
power at uh, at at uh, especially in in 16th and 17th century and uh, and there were for example sida members were were presented in 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 a local district court so this could perhaps uh, uh, mean that maybe maybe we could nowadays also uh, improve the, the situation so that uh, Samis have more uh, self-determination in, in this field also. But uh, hopefully also in, in, in much much more broader broader sense and, and broader fields. But this, this could be just one one example what to what to take from from that era, from the era of ancient Sidas when they were recognized in the state systems. Um, do you have any questions or comments to us, or do we move to wrapping this up? Well, I think I have. I don't have uh, any questions at, at this point. It was interesting to to hear your presentations. Ja tälle mun äh, kiitän no kuktui ähm, Oulante ja Aasla tää servamistan saastella mi. Ähm, Millä tui äh, viitaa hallistan tän ähm, siitä iäskuute peli ja ja tän hauttasia missä maita ei 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 kiovadin. So thank you, um, Aslat um, and um, Olanti, for this very um, interesting conversation uh, that I also enjoyed very much. We have covered the Sita, Sita uh, history and how it has translated into some of the uh, uh, current day practices, how it's how it's taken into account, and also some of the some of the kind of like more social practices. Um, um, uh, traditional Sami social practices that I, I uh, spoke about. Um, I want to thank you uh, for making time for this uh, panel, for um, speaking today, and also again, thank Neisa uh, North and the Chinta for making space for this conversation. Ollu kiihtu ja elle tervan. Joo, mu pelesmai. Thank you on my behalf as well. Thank you very much on my behalf also.